Hey there, and welcome to another episode in our training series. Tonight, we're going to go over how to use Bollinger Bands. And for those that have checked out the bonus section, you might have came across an interview that I did with a member, Kay Morelli, and he explains his way of using the unusual option activity and combining it with the Bollinger Bands. So that's what I'm going to go over with a few examples tonight and show you specifically what to be looking for and how to use this indicator. Just a little bit of background on the Bollinger Bands. Uh, the person who created the Bollinger Bands was a individual named John Bollinger and he created the bands in 1980s. Uh, what the purpose of the bands are is to provide relative high and low price action. So it's taking a certain amount of time and it's providing the price action of the highs and lows of uh, what currently is happening in the price action of the chart. And what this specifically means is when we take a look at uh, something like this, we'll look at a few examples. But if you notice here, the, these, this blue area is the Bollinger Bands. And the Bollinger Bands have three components to it. They have a high band, a low band, and a middle band. The middle band is typically a 20 period uh, moving average. It can be an EMA or an SMA, and an SMA is a simple moving average, and an EMA is an exponential moving average. When the bands get tight like this, what we see here in these candles, if you understand candlesticks, is that there's not there's not much flu price fluctuation in the uh, candlesticks here. It's, it's kind of in a tight range, indicating a sideways market. And a lot of individuals that use the Bollinger Bands look for this, and we'll go into a little bit more of details of how to trade that, but what they're looking for is a big move or an explosive move, something similar to what we saw here um, when the bands get very tight and then they widen just like this. So the calculations of the bands are derived from a standard two standard deviations move two a two standard deviation move from the middle or that moving average here in the middle here. And the moving average on my chart is this green level. So you can see here two standard deviation moves lower comes to the lower Bollinger Band and the higher from here to here is the uh, two, standard, two standard deviation move from the moving average here. So what we're just looking at and what this is kind of calculating for us is that a kind of a glimpse at volatility. If volatility in the the uh, stock is very tight, meaning that the price fluctuations are not really that extreme, it's kind of in a sideways market. It's in a very tight range. Uh, that typically means that if you understand candlesticks and pattern trading, that that price action and you hear me refer to it as in coiling or getting tight. And when you're looking at patterns. Um, on this on charts you start seeing that the volatility starts getting or volatility or the price action starts getting tighter 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 and then eventually you get that big move either a break above resistance or uh, break below support you know however that pattern is forming the Bollinger Bands can help you look for that as well and you can see here on a name like Apple we had a, a very tight move right here between 363 and I don't know, 325 for some time here where the prices, you know, bounced between these levels here. And then we finally, after a while, broke out above that resistance. And this is where the Bollinger Band price action crept alongside the Bollinger Band until it finally topped out and then pulled back. And what individuals that play the Bollinger Bands are looking for are extreme moves higher out of the Bollinger Bands. It's called a piercing pattern. So for this one is a uh, pretty good indication of a piercing pattern when the when the price action gets outside the Bollinger Band typically it pulls back in and you'll you'll likely see it. The exceptions are in a big name like Apple you'll see it uh, retreat or pull back to the mean. The mean being that zero level, the 20 day moving average at least. Or um, a lot of times you see it pull back when a lot of people trade this, 
they look for this piercing pattern and they look to trade it and write it all the way back down to the bottom end of this uh, move here. So this one would have been a uh, good example here of a way to play this. And how they play it is they look this candle here and they look for a move outside this piercing. So this one wouldn't have initiated the trade. It would have been not until this candle on this gap lower here. Um, and then they would have traded it all the way down here to lock in profits. And then the next trade signal would have actually been a long trade right there. The reason this is a typical indication is because you could get false alarms, uh, such as when we saw, went back to that move here, you can get a move outside the Bollinger Bands for some time, or a, a, a move alongside the Bollinger Band for some time. And notice here when we had a piercing pattern, it didn't really break below there, and you can see it continued to move higher there. So you could have got a false signal, and uh, could, that trade could have gone, went against you uh, a little bit as well. And that's why you have to, in any kind of um, trading plan, you always have to have an, uh, an exit plan or, or understand of how to get out of a trade. And the reason that is is because you get false um, moves just like this one where whoops, where the uh, the move right here is a piercing pattern, pulls back, doesn't really get outside this, uh, this candle here where it would have looked to pull back, ideally back to this move here, and moved up against it a little bit and then finally rolled over. So that's uh, the reason why you have to, on something like this, kind of understand and kind of learn a little bit more about it and kind of see how it uh, reacts. But this would have been one of them. Um, and when I went back and suggested that names like Apple typically have this, you'll see names in small cap names where the Bollinger Bands are really extremely uh, very pierced and they continue to go higher. And that deals with a lot of short covering and just uh, a little bit of manipulation as well. But those usually pull back um, in the mean as well. But those are, could be, uh, a lot of times, if you can get a squeezing pattern in a small cap name like that and you can get on, a, get in, get on the right side, uh, you have a really good opportunity. Now, a lot of individuals refer to the Bollinger Bands as a squeeze. However, the squeeze doesn't indicate a move in either direction. This could have easily moved to the downside here and uh, broke lower. So you just have to understand support and resistance levels and also use it with some different indicators. A lot of times individuals would use it with the RSI, which would this would have given it a very uh, overbought indication at this level, um, but not an ideal situation. Um, in hindsight, it would have been a, a, a bad, a, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, it would have uh, not been a, a, an appropriate signal. It would have been a bad signal and you would have had to stop out. Um, but the next signal that would have been an indication would have been this one right here where it would have been would have taken that loss and uh, covered that one and have profited for a big profit on this move here all the way lower. Then you got another in, another buy signal right after that for this long side trade all the way back into this candle here. And a lot of times individuals will buy or short off these Bollinger Bands. So we came into a support or a resistance level and some individuals would have looked to have shorted back into that and pulled back. And then we notice here right now, we uh, pulled back and volatility or price action starting to get tighter again. And we should see a move coming up in the next few days to a few weeks in Apple for a move higher. So when we take a look at a few other names to kind of get a better picture, We'll look at a name like Baidu, which had seen volatility or price action increase here. When prices broke lower, if you notice here, volatility or price action started getting tight, tight, tight. Notice the candles here, very tight. And then we got a squeeze right here, and then we broke. And, and like I said, the Bollinger Bands don't indicate if it's going to break higher or lower. It just indicates that there's going to be a big move coming. Then we saw this move coming here to the downside, and this is where the Bollinger Bands expanded because of the price action here. Then we got that piercing pattern. We got it. Well, it actually pierced here. You notice here it actually pierced here, but did not give a buy signal uh, to get into that until here, which a lot of people look for a quick reaction to the upside. Um, so if it doesn't do it in a day or two, they don't look for it to uh, get long. Uh, but then it rolled over and it pierced again here 
but it didn't take out this high here, so it would have not been a buy at all. And then it actually came again down here. It appears here, did not take out this level here until uh, one, two, three, the fourth day, which a lot of people would have looked to say, no, I would have passed on that because they're looking for a move in, an, in a day or two, not having it take a few days. Uh, so this one is, you can see where that move came in very tight, and then that move, that or the price action or the Bollinger Bands indicated that there was going to be an explosive move, just not which direction, and it did, and it moved to the downside. And now you can see with price action, the Bollinger Bands uh, finally, or the price prices finally hit the top end of the Bollinger Band again, backed off, and in the short term here, we have the Bollinger Bands leading higher, which is a short-term indication of price movement higher. But if we look at the longer term, we really don't have an indication of a trend forming here on Baidu over the long time or the, over the yearly chart. However, we take a look on the five year, you could see if the Bollinger Bands coming in off the highs here, that we're on an upward trend. And if you're looking at a weekly chart, right now we're kind of flat at the top here. But when we look at the weekly chart, you can see where the price action on this one, you know, came outside the Bollinger Band, pulled back, came hit the bottom end of here and bounced up. So again, it's just an indication to potentially where to buy and to sell uh, a security or how to play a security. But if you want to play it via options or you know whatever instrument you're trading, that's how you can look at and how to use it. So a few names I'm going to look at that saw some option activity today. And we can kind of look at and take a, or kind of look at the, uh, uh, the uh, Bollinger Bands and uh, kind of see what's going on here. So the January 15 calls traded 4,000 times today with uh, some buyers. And what K. Morales suggests is that when he looks at a name, he looks at the Bollinger Bands here, and we'll have to scan this down to a one year, is he's looking to see if there's call buying, if it is coming in off the bottom end of the uh, Bollinger Band. So ideally, he likes to get a position. If they're buying calls, he likes to buy it really off the Bollinger Band here on this low end. And if it doesn't and if it doesn't hold up, he has a very tight stop, depending on how his strategy is. But he can have a tight stop, being you know possibly at this low right here, and look to uh, play it uh, for a long side trade. So today we saw prices uh, up a little bit higher. So this would have been, a, and actually for a lot of people, uh, a indication to be a buy because it pierced here and then it finally took out that range right there. So it took out. So this could be a buy uh, for some people that follow the Bollinger Bands and use that. And uh, this would have been, I, for Kay Morale, probably an ideal situation where he's looking for those calls and uh, he sees that the call buying is there. It came off the uh, this, uh, this lower Bollinger Band and potentially come back here and move here. But also notice the Bollinger Bands are very tight, these levels as well. So it's getting a little bit tighter here and it could be setting up for what potentially could be a bigger move, which we saw uh, when this was in a downtrend here, act off and then really aggressively sold off from 25 here. And uh, when we talk about getting outside that range, this is a perfect example of one right here, then got back, um, didn't really get to the upside here, kind of traded sideways, um, and then finally hit the top end, which profit targets are typically given um, depending on who has, who you, depending on your trading strategy and your back testing and what you feel comfortable with, uh, sometimes the profit target is all the way back at the top end of this Bollinger Band here. So notice here the volatility or the price action got very loose, um, and then it got very tight, and then we got that big move here and then pulled back. So um, again, you know, this is something you have to toy with, but I just want to open you to the understanding of how to use these Bollinger Bands and potentially creating your own system going forward. Let's take a look at another one. I got two, and then I want to wrap it up with that. PNFP. This one's on November 1750 calls, uh, pretty active today, and we'll type this in the chart, PNFP. If you notice here, we saw this one walk the Bollinger Bands, this is what's typically called, or I re reference it to. I uh, noticed the volatility got very tight here, or I'm sorry, very loose, and then it got very tight at this move here, and it started to make a very aggressive move to the upside. Um, but if we just draw a support level here, you know, this is why understanding support and resistance is very ideal. We didn't come to it exactly, but... Once it gets and has a pretty aggressive move like that, the volatility is, uh, or the price action is very wide, it's going to get tight again. It's going to have to consolidate. That's what happens. It means it has a big move, and then it consolidates, has a big move, and consolidates. That's, that's typically how stocks move. 
Today we saw buyers come in, but we're near the top end of this, uh, this Bollinger Band here. We do have the 20-day moving average here, and we could come and touch this and retest it and then bounce up higher off that. Or um, if it did, the, if it did get very aggressively oversold, this 11 would be an ideal situation to buy on. Well, over time, once price action starts to, uh, let's say, work itself out, this move, this Bollinger Band will move up probably into uh, this 13 to 14 level and we'll see this uh, get, get a little bit tighter over the weeks. The problem with this one is that they're looking with the November calls being bought, they're only looking for 16 days for this move. So they're looking for a quick move and by what Kay Morali looks for, this wouldn't really set up on his parameters of uh, an opportunity to play. And maybe he'll look and play it some uh, other way, but as of right now of how he looks for it, he wants something that's close to this $11. And that's just how you weed out ideas. You're not going to get everyone right. You just want to find a system that uh, you feel comfortable with and you can uh, look for. Now, MGA did not have call activity today, but I do want to show you uh, one that when volatility got wide here, we started getting narrow. We got a little bit wide here, uh, but we came into the top end of this, which actually happened to be a resistance level uh, right here across. And we did pull back here, but we're coming into the bottom end of this Bollinger Band, which if we draw a support level as well, kind of coincides with a lateral support level here. So this would be something you can consider to take a look at for a play with the Bollinger Bands getting very tight here. But again, this doesn't indicate that there's going to be a move higher or lower. So to anticipate, you're going to have to be right on your direction. But you can wait for a confirmation, either a breakdown or a break off this level um, for a potential move. And that's how you would look for it and uh, potentially set that up. Now, the system that I'm using is Thinkorswim. And Bollinger Bands are widely available on most platforms. I'm using profit charts here. And to apply Bollinger Bands on your trading platform, all you need to do is click on Studies. If you're using Thinkorswim, click on st actually go to Charts, click on Profit and click on studies, apply studies, and on the side here you will see Bollinger Bands. You have the EMA or the SMA. SMA is simple moving average and the EMA is exponential moving average. There are different calculations. A lot of people prefer the EMAs because they're uh, calculated differently and they are uh, they're, they're, the sensitivity of price action is a little bit quicker than the simple and it doesn't really matter. They're not off by too much. It's just it really, at the end of the day, it's what you feel comfortable with. Uh, if you notice here, I have a few EMAs and I have a few MAs. The 20 MA I was using was a simple moving average. Uh, the Bollinger Band system that we were looking at is a BB EMA. And ideally, if you're going to if you're going to stick with the uh, EMA, I'd just say um, you know go with a 20 day uh, EMA as well. Or if you're going to go with a simple moving average, I would say go with the 20 simple moving average. You don't have to get too creative. Again, it's not going to be perfect. It's, it, there's no perfect system out there. It's just an indication of price action and where potentially overbought and oversold conditions could arise. And uh, really just putting a strategy together and understanding your risk, ideally where you can stop out at. And, and, then, and that's just really how to put a system together. You know, some people like the Bollinger Bands, some people don't. It's just really what you feel comfortable with, but I do want to do, uh, open your eyes to it, uh, especially after uh, several questions I got after that interview, which again, you could check out in the bonus section. And uh, it's about 45 minutes long. He talks about uh, his way of weeding out option activity and how he buys and sells stocks. So again, we talked about buying names, but it, very simply, you could do it for the opposite when the Bollinger Band is at the top end here and there starts and there's strong put activity uh, you could potentially look to uh, play the puts for a pullback into that or a pullback off those Bollinger Bands so hopefully this video has helped you and if you have any questions feel free to either send a ticket into the support system or leave a comment below after you subscribe to the channel below, make sure you head over to optionsizzle.com and download my free report on how I outline the process of finding options that are on the verge for explosive moves.